Welcome back to MathSpark. In this video, we're going to talk about active note-taking. In the last video, we talked about what credit hours mean in college and how to do some basic time management, specifically how to block out your semester so that you have time to go to your classes and also time to study. In this video, we want to talk about what you should be doing in those red blocks, the blocks that you have set aside for lab and lecture. Like everything else as a scientist or an engineer, rather than attack this blindly, let's see if we can apply the POIA process to note-taking. So can we understand the problem, devise a plan, carry out the plan, and then look back at the notes we're doing? To understand the problem, it's best summed up in the words of philosopher Mortimer Adler, who said that lecture is the process whereby the notes of the teacher become the notes of the student without passing through the minds of either. You'll find that the pace of college math and science courses often mean that the instructor is racing by through lecture, and sometimes it's going to be all you can do to simply keep up with copying down the information on the blackboard without ever having a chance to think about it. So can we make note-taking a more active and effective process? That means we need to come up with some kind of plan. The following are several techniques that are useful in making note-taking an active learning experience. First, sit in a good spot. Imagine you're in a giant lecture hall like this. Where's a good place for taking notes, and where's a poor place for it? Well, no matter what the size of the room is, you want to sit as near the front as possible. With fewer distractions between you and the professor, you'll see the board better, you'll hear the lecture better, and you'll be able to interact with the professor much easier. Let's be honest, the only reason why people sit in the back of a classroom is so that they can avoid interaction with the instructor in the class. And trust me, no instructor falls for that. So, sit near the front, get a good unobstructed view of the board. Second step, have a dedicated notebook for your notes. So if you're taking Calc 1, have a Calc 1 notebook, and only your class notes will go into it. We'd mentioned this in the homework video earlier. You'd want to have a dedicated three-ring binder for your Calc 1 homework. I'd also recommend that you would have separate single-subject notebooks for each one of your classes. You're going to find that, due to the pace of class coverage, you're going to fill up your notebooks. And it's far simpler to add a new notebook when this happens than to try to somehow budget between a one-subject notebook here and a partially filled three-subject notebook over there. Separate notebook for each one. I'd also recommend getting a notebook that has perforated pages in it so that at the end of the semester you could rip those pages out and stick them in the three-rig binder with your homework. The third step in our effective note-taking plan is being prepared. Was there any required reading for the class? If so, read it. Was there a homework assignment that needed to be done before class? If so, do it. In the act of reading or doing the homework, did it make you question something in the notes? Ask it. Come into class knowing what you needed to have done and ready to begin a dialogue with the instructor. Now this is all before you ever got around to taking your notes. Is there any plan for good note taking? Well one is the one-third margin technique for notes. And if you're unfamiliar with this technique, it goes something like this. On your note paper, on each sheet of your note paper, you want to draw about one-third the way through a margin. It doesn't have to be particularly straight. You're just trying to shave off a third of the page on the left. Now when you're in class, you're going to take all of your notes on that right two-thirds of the paper, and you're going to leave that left one-third side completely blank. Now, I don't really have any great advice for you on the actual act of taking notes, because that varies greatly with individuals. Some people like to use outlines. Other people like to copy exactly what was on the board, exactly the way it was done. Some people focus less on what was written on the board and more on the words that the instructor used. However, as a good rule of thumb for math and engineering courses, if the instructor thought it was important enough to write down on the board, then he or she probably thinks it's important enough for you to get down in your notes precisely. So when it comes to taking your notes, use the right two-thirds of the page for note-taking. If it was important enough for the board, it's probably important enough for your notes. So this is my plan for taking notes. If we go back to the POIA process, now that we've got a plan, the next step is to carry out that plan. And once again, that's something that only you can do in the classroom. So sit near the front. Get out your spiral notebook set aside for your class. Ask the questions you need answered and then take your notes on those right two-thirds of the page. 
What about the last step in the POYA process, looking back? What can we do looking back at our classroom notes? Well, this is where that one-third margin comes in. During one of your study times, following a lecture, and sooner is always better, go back and reread your notes. You're never done with them that first time through. As you reread the notes, annotate that left margin with information, a summary of something, identifying a certain portion as a definition or an example, uh, tying certain problems to quiz problems or exam problems that the instructor's given you access to. Effectively be thinking about how what you wrote in those notes connect with what you're doing in that class. Sometimes you're going to have no idea what's going on. If you're confused by some portion of your notes, identify that clearly and make sure you ask about that first thing at the start of the next lecture. This is part of that being prepared. By actively reviewing your notes, you'll not only solidify the concepts in the class, or failing that, at least clearly articulate the places that you're struggling, but it'll also mean that you're now set to start looking at the problems and the assignments that came out of this set of lecture notes, which is precisely what we'd like to talk about next time. How to actively study during those green times that we set aside on our semester block.